in information technology, what the chief information officer was in every company, was mainly an intermediary between the suppliers of ICT in the, in the 80s and 90s. It was the guy who had to help computerize the company, had to help modernize the company in terms also of organizational things and so on. You know, it was, it was modernizing with the new tools, incorporating internet, getting people to learn how to use laptops or whatever, or PCs actually at the beginning. So his role was mainly, or his or her role, I don't think there were many women in that role at the time, now there are more. Uh, this person would then take care of how to relate between suppliers and uh, the modernizing companies, the companies that were mature and needed to leap into the future, into the present day. Now those companies are already modern, and those companies are now looking to find a strategy, finding out who they should ally themselves with, what companies they should buy, how they should relate to the public, what they should do in terms of the global economy, where they should be going, and so on. In that case, the chief information officer or the CIO, what he or she has to do is to participate in strategy. It's no longer just being an intermediary about modernization, like a supply-driven thing, but he would then demand from the ICT community, from the consultancy community, from the skies that there might be in this area and experts in various things, how to feed into the strategy, what can be done in order to have a, a good competitive, uh, competitive future for the company. So, this change of role also means that what has changed is that companies no longer have to look inside to modernize themselves. Now they have to look out to see what customers demand, what possible consumers or producers, whoever they're selling to, need. They have to innovate in that direction, and then they have to ask the suppliers of ICT to innovate to help them do this. So now it's a completely different thing. You know, you're completely looking out towards demand. So everything that happens in the deployment period is pulled by demand. It's a demand pull period, whereas installation was a supply push period. So that change makes, in that context, the whole idea of big data, for instance, is a very important concept because that's one of the things that information technology allows. A certain amount of predictability on the basis of a lot of information. Amounts of information that we cannot even fathom. I mean, there are enormous amounts of information, but they're like unstructured stuff. So what you can do now is to make sense of that information and to use it for predictability, to be able to see in which direction you should go or what's happening with your competitors or what's happening with your customers or whatever. So there is this new thing, which is one more, one more, and there'll be more and more and more. I mean, social media was the big thing 10 years ago, now it's big data, now tomorrow it's be something else. Because that's how technological revolutions evolve, one new system after the other, depending on what happened before and what, you, you know, what you're getting. It's because you have so much free networking that you have so much data now to work with. It's because you have mobile phones, it's because you have Facebook, it's because you have, you know, millions of people in these networks. Of course, that, that provides lots of data. So then what do you do with that? You know, that's wealth. Data used to be a burden. Now it's an asset. What do you do with it depends on how you handle it. And how you handle it depends on ICT tools. Therefore, that's become a very important thing. I would say that there are main Three, there are mainly three directions, three major directions in innovation today. One is the ICT itself, the ICT industry itself, everything that has to do with information, technology, software, telecommunications, all that. That continues to innovate, but now it innovates following demand. So finding out what people want. And why can they do that and why couldn't they do it before? <coughs> Because before, people didn't know what to want, because they didn't even know what you could do. But now everybody knows what you can do. Everybody knows, I would like this improved in this and that other way. And, and it makes sense. You know, people already have the logic of the thing. 
and in which direction it could improve. So there is the possibility. Of course, there are still surprises, but basically most people know what they can ask, what they can ask for. So ICT would move in the direction of demand. Then you have the whole range of innovations that can be done in every other industry using ICT, basically because most innovations are done with some form of use of ICT. In that case, uh, that it could be, I would say, that generally almost every industry has to move in the direction of green. Sustainability is going to be a direction that no matter what you choose as your specialization, that's going to be there because of realism, because we only have one planet, <laughs> because there are too many of us and there is too much global development. So that's the second thing. And the third thing, of course, is the radical new technologies, biotech, nanotech, new materials, etc., all these things, which will be developing now with a view to, at some point, a breakthrough that will bring a revolution. So those three very important directions. I think for the moment, big data has a lot to do with those three directions, but I think there'll be many other tools and many other things that will happen that have to do with how you innovate along those three directions, depending on what type of company you are.